Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the very first international episode of Vintage Bursche. For my first international episode, I picked a topic um, most of you might know already, which is um, the British style philosophy versus the Italian style philosophy. But instead of talking about, you know, like tailoring details, structured shoulders, relaxed shoulders and so on, I want to talk about the concept, the style concepts behind those details. So bear with me, but first, dramatic intro. <laughs> Yep, that's whiskey in here. Well, I want you to understand the concept behind British style and Italian style. Why? Because, you know, I, I studied computer science um, and in a lot of exams you were allowed to bring a formula sheet with you. Um, and did it make the exam easier? Basically no, because uh, the formulas like the details of tailoring or simple facts um, are not that important, especially in a time when you can like always take your smartphone, um, your mobile and look it up on Google. So uh, the more difficult thing is understanding why the world evolves like it does. This is a quite technical point of view and maybe very German, but I am German, so duh. So let's start with the British style. Um, for the British school of thought, the function and occasion when you are wearing some outfit is very closely linked to the outfit itself. So, for example, um, when you're in the countryside, you are basically wearing tweed, especially like uh, jackets that are cut for living in the countryside, like Norfolk jackets, you have action bags, you can move around. and. Tweed itself is basically the old school outdoor fabric because it keeps you warm, um, it's durable uh, with the right patterns and colors, it basically works like camouflage. The, the school of thought is quite practical, even though British style is sometimes conceived as stiff or uh, very rule based. But in fact, it's quite practical because um, the British are very good at adapting new elements to um, their style. Look at, for example, the cummerbund, which is basically an element from India. In warmer climates, it's uh, much much more useful to wear a cummerbund because it, um, it's not that isolating um, rather than wearing a waistcoat. So basically, the, the British school of thought is, uh, again, very practical and the outfit is very closely linked to the occasion occasion and the function it's, uh, it's serving. Another thing is, um, it's sometimes quite okay that you can see uh, that your garments are heavily used because it's, uh, it's just a sign that, you, that you're using your clothes for the purpose they are designed for. Okay, that's basically the British school of thought, so let's move on to the Italian style. To understand the Italian approach on style, we have to move back to uh, the 16th century. In 1528, uh, Baldassare Castellones um, printed a book called, I guess, uh, The Book of Court, where, where he explains how you have to behave uh, when you're living at court. And in this, in this book, he uses the word sprezzatura, which is, you know, like explaining basically the Italian style. The Italian style and sprezzatura mean two things. First, um, the, the main focus is not exactly the occasion or the function, but rather the aesthetic in general. And the second, most important, is uh, that it has to look effortless. Wait, what? Effortlessly elegant? How do you do that? Well, let's have a look at uh, one of the most popular Italian style icons, Gianni Agnelli, who was the CEO of uh, Fiat for, I guess, 30 years. 
and um, as you can see here he just um, incorporates little neglects into his outfits to convey this idea of effortlessness because it looks a bit it looks a bit sloppy um, it looks like he hasn't put much thought into it but he did and um, this is basically the idea of effortlessly elegant. Two more modern approaches to this are, for example, uh, tying your tie so the narrow end is longer than the thick one, or um, wearing a jacket and uh, leaving the cuffs of the sh shirt underneath open. You can see that a lot in uh, uh, Florence at Pitiuomo. So this is basically the difference between the concept of Italian style and the British style. Um, and from that concept you can basically derive why um, British tailoring is a bit more structured, while Italian tailoring is a bit more relaxed. I hope you liked my video. See you soon. Okay, we are not quite there yet. Um, thanks again for watching. This was my very first international episode um, on this channel. So, um, sorry for my accent, sorry for being very insecure with uh, speaking English, because I'm not a nat native speaker. Please don't be uh, hard, too hard on me. Um, I'm just starting with YouTube, so it would be great if you just subscribe to my channel. What can you expect from this channel? Well, I'm planning on doing um, sewing tutorials. I will basically start with very little things like um, hand rolling fabric so you can you know like sew your own pocket square. Um, I intend to show you how you make your lapel um, ready for a boutonniere like a lapel flower um, and at some point we will do like sewing um, a flat cap or a baker boy cap, a waistcoat and so on. Um, I will I guess I will start a, a series about what we can learn from the different decades of classic menswear. Or at some point in the future I will stop saying mmm all the time. If you have any questions or uh, an idea for a topic I should cover, uh, just put it in the comments, write me a message, uh, like, subscribe, share, you know, all the stuff. Yeah, thanks for watching again and uh, see you soon.